Now, I want to say something else which I think you uh, should understand, and that is uh, that there is no such thing as art. Now, I can't get over the fact that I only realized this about six or eight years ago. In other words, my whole life, uh, in some way or another, since I was about 18 years old, devoted to painting, except for the war years. And here, I had to get to be uh, maybe 50 years old, or 52 or whatever it was, before I suddenly realized that you couldn't talk in terms of capital A or T, or you couldn't talk in terms of capital P, A-I-N-T-I-N-G. There is no such thing as painting per se. In other words, there are different uh, basic uh, styles in painting, and one of the first things that we have to become a little bit clear about is the uh, different uh, approaches, uh, the different motives, uh, I used Mo Mondrian and Soutine before, uh, which animate these men. And as I see it, there are four uh, basic styles. Now, maybe there are 10, but in any case, maybe there are 20, I don't know. There are, I think you could probably say there are 10 styles operative in New York today. But for my thinking, uh, I, I think in terms of four basic styles, and these are what you might call the expressionist existential style, best given recently, I think, by de Kooning and Giacometti, and then the classical form conscious uh, style, and the past given very clearly by Ang, let's say, somewhat by Cezanne in the middle period, and then in our own time by someone like Mondrian. In other words, a very clear consciousness of a form-making uh, process. Then in some strange way, which seems to continue on and on, there always seems to be realism somewhere. Like in the middle of the 19th century, when the big trend uh, was toward abstraction, the artists didn't know that they were working toward abstraction, but they were working away from subject matter and toward uh, making the painting stand up on its own terms, and, uh, regardless of subject matter. So the main trend was uh, uh, abstraction or toward abstraction. Yet you get a, a guy like Courbet, who almost uh, literally uh, tried to copy what he what he saw. It always seems to be around in some strange uh, way. And say in the 30s and the 40s in America here, you have people like uh, Hopper and Dickinson. They're what we call sports or deviates. There's really no uh, mutants in a way. Hard to explain a guy like Dickinson in the 1940s, but there he was, pretty much painting the same type of painting that he had been painted since maybe 1910, and is continuing to do today. And we all know that since, when, 1960 or 1963, there has been a marked uh, resurgence of uh, realistic uh, painting. Uh, there was that uh, symposium, uh, sp symposium that you have had here. Now, when I, when I said that I had this kind of revelation about there not being anything called painting, I was obsessed with uh, painting as uh, in this sense of humanism, the, ex ex the existential expressionist uh, trend. Now, suddenly I was pointing my finger at some young painters, and I said that art is not a joke. Uh, it's not fun. And I was thinking of that at that time, about 1963, the new Dada which had uh, sort of come into being, Rauschenberg being a prime example uh, of that. And then as I said that, that art is not fun, I thought to myself, well, that's not true. There have been many artists in the past uh, to, whom, uh, to whom art has been uh, a matter of fun, or a matter of play, or a matter of, uh, of uh, gaiety. And almost immediately, this painter Cruikshank uh, comes to mind, uh, the English painter. Rowlandson uh, comes to mind. Uh, I was just thinking, out, I was just seeing outside, Bosch. Isn't there a great deal of play in Bosch? You can't say that he's not a serious painter. But thinking this matter over, there has always been an interest on the part of some artists for what you might call fun or play or entertainment. And that has been clearly a part of our lives since since. Dada. In other words, the concept of a logic or uh, uh, non-intellectuality, uh, the non-serious uh, aspect of art was always latent, 
and it, co and it, and it, has, it has come into prominence in a very strong way uh, since, since Dada. It's with us, and it's going to continue to be with us. I think uh, as we go on, there will always be uh, this uh, uh, a ra I not irrational, but a rational or a uh, logical expression. And there's no point of talking whether it's a reflex of our time, like Popeye. The fact is, I think it's going to continue. It has been uh, pretty much with us in Dada and surrealism and people like Duchamp. And then if you go back further, even the primit primitive art of, uh, of uh, Rousseau is part of this whole trend that I'm talking about. So we can see today that uh, you have an artist like de Kooning, and then you have uh, this new uh, type of uh, hard edge painting, systemic painting, and so forth. And then uh, you have realism. And then you have the whole uh, aura of uh, uh, amusement art or entertainment art. Russian Burgess is good an exa example uh, of this. Hold it just a second. And then, so that therefore, when I give my uh, talk, whenever I give it, you sort of have to ask me, uh, like, what art am I talking about? If I don't make a point about it, I would be falling into my own bias or my own prejudice which is this existential, uh, expressionistic, uh, humanistic, uh, man-centered, somewhat serious uh, concern with the nature of art. But be a little bit alert that some guy might be talking about the, the absoluteness of a work of art, uh, maybe talking about elimination in the sense of the systemic painting, and maybe as absolutely s sincere as you are when you are trying to pound more and more meaning uh, into, a, uh, into a work of art. So that's a kind of a basic premise, I would say, that you should understand, that, that in our own time, like you have many types of societies, you have many types of art, and that is something that you're going to have to deal with uh, as we go along.